everyone, I'm Suzanne from Simply Sue. Welcome back to my channel or welcome if this is the first time you're here. I'm glad to have you. Today we are going to be learning Downward Dog. So this will be a great tutorial if you're a beginner or a newbie and you've never even done or even maybe heard of a downward facing dog. And it's also a great video if you are a more advanced yogi and you want to revisit the foundations of these poses. So if you're ready to learn downward dog, just roll out your mat and we'll begin. So I always recommend that when you start a downward facing dog practice or pose, um, that you warm up your wrists because this is a um, hand bearing or weight bearing pose in your hands. Um, so yeah, definitely warm up your wrists. And I do have a video that you can check somewhere down here. <laughs> Um, on how to warm up your wrists effectively. So go check that out if you want to. And also just maybe warm up your spine a little bit before you start any downward facing dog. So you can do a few cat cows and we'll actually do that in a second. A lot of times people will say that downward facing dog, teachers will say that downward facing dog is a resting pose. Believe me, it isn't, especially if you're a beginner, you're gonna feel the intensity of this pose, so don't worry. And if you're a more advanced yogi, it might feel like more of a resting pose than other poses, in contrast to other poses which are harder, or if you're flowing and you're kind of stopping the flow in downward dog, then it feels like a resting pose, but you're actually still working out your whole body. This is a super intense pose that helps you tone the whole body. So. Yeah, not a resting pose. <laughs> so we'll start, as I said, with the hands. Let's just bring our palms together and we'll interlace our fingers and just do a few wrist circles here. So as I said, this um, pose is like a push-up or even a handstand. We want to have nice warm wrists because we will be putting a lot of weight in our hands and wrists. And especially if you're a beginner, you're not used to putting any weight in your hands. So it will feel a bit uncomfortable. It can even feel a little painful for some people. So nice warm wrists will help. Okay, so we'll come onto our hands and knees now and just do a few cat cows. So you wanna make sure here, we'll start with the hand foundation, that you're opening up and spreading all 10 fingers. Hasta banda, which is hand to earth connection or lock. And press down through all 10 fingertips and even make sure that you're pressing down through this L here. So your index and thumb finger needs to be really pressing down. So you're pressing towards the inside of your hands where the wrist joint is the strongest, okay? So this will ensure that you don't have or don't experience too much wrist pain. Also, make sure that your shoulders or hands are beneath your shoulders or maybe even slightly wider, especially if you have broader shoulders. You could also turn them out slightly, but usually we recommend that your middle finger is pointing up. Okay, so that will be the correct positioning of your hands. And I like to kind of press them and scrunch them back as if I was trying to scrunch up the mat. And I know that they're nice and engaged and really make sure I'm pressing on the inner edge of the hands. Got it? A lot of instructions already just for the hands. Okay, so moving into our cat cow here, just inhale, lift your gaze and lift your chest. And exhale around, pressing down, spread the shoulder blades apart, drop your head. Inhale, lift, and exhale round. Let's do this just once more. Inhale to lift and lengthen, and tuck your toes as you exhale this time. So that we just bring some awareness into our feet, trying to get all 10 toes pressing down into the mat. Beautiful. So from here, just come into a neutral spine. So we're neither rounding, neither dropping the chest. So belly slightly engaged. Actually pull your navel in even slightly. So this will help in your down dog to stabilize your pelvis. So now that we have our hand position in place. We want to check out the shoulders. So as this is an upper body strengthening pose, 
um, we are going to be, we, this is going to require a lot of upper body strength and stability from the shoulder girdle. So how do we reach the stability? We're going to externally rotate the arms. This can be quite tricky to understand. So to get into it, I like to start from my hands and knees. I'm going to bend my elbows out and squeeze them in towards the back, towards my knees. And then from here, straighten. This brings your elbow crease to face the front of the mat and you've externally rotated your biceps here. And this is the position you want to keep throughout your downward dog. Just make sure that you're still pressing the inner part of your hand to the center. We all have the tendency to want to lift up, especially when we've externally rotated the arms. So just make sure you're still bringing that awareness to the inner edge. Okay, so we have our elbows and shoulders in position, our arms, my navel is pulling in, my ten toes are pressing down, and now all that's left to do is start to lift those hips and push them up and back. So here I'm really trying to push my shoulders away from my hands, push my hands forward in the mat, and really feel that pushing motion. So my shoulders are as far away as possible to my ears. So I'm not scrunched up here. I'm creating space with this external rotation of the biceps and pressing. Okay. Now you see here, my legs are very bent because I'm trying to pull my tailbone up to the sky. This is what we're looking for the nice long spine and you can keep your knees bent and your heels buoyant so they can float off the mat. This Bringing your heels down is necessary for downward facing dog. Okay, so we've hold, held it here for just a few minutes. Let's drop the knees and take a break before we move in to the next couple of adjustments. So that's quite a lot to take in already. Adho Mukesh Vanasana, this is the Sanskrit name of um, Downward facing dog is a very common pose in the yoga practice. You will rarely find a class where you're not um, brought into this pose. So it's nice to have a good understanding of the basic alignments and the foundational um, aspects of this pose. And it's really two lines of energy. So we're creating an inverted V and we're really bringing energy from our hands up to the tailbone and then from the tailbone down to the heels. With the heels on the mat or not, as I said, it doesn't really matter. It's just a matter of having um, flexibility in your hamstrings and that will come over time. Now, this pose is really a strengthening pose, a toning pose. So you're going to be required to work. It's going to strengthen the whole body, especially the core. Um, so your, your hamstrings, if they're not flexible, you're going to have to bend your knees and really make sure you bend them as much as you need to. If you're looking to um, develop hamstring flexibility so that you can maybe straighten your legs or bring your heels down, then I don't recommend this pose as the one to work your hamstrings in. There are many other poses where you can do this. So don't worry about not having straight legs and really this will come with time. So give yourself some space, some kindness and some compassion. Now let's get back to it. So coming back, fingers open, pressing down, inner edge of the hand pressing down. I'm going to just rotate my arms, my biceps out. So cr elbow creases facing forward, 10 toes down, navel in and lift and push back. So another thing I forgot to mention is the head position. So I sometimes see people really looking forward. Drop your gaze, look in between your feet and press up. Your, the aim is to try and bring your chest towards your thighs. Okay. If it's okay for you, you can pedal your feet. This sometimes helps to um, release tension in those hamstrings, especially if you're practicing in the morning, they can be quite tight. And then from here, pushing your tailbone up, maybe you can start to lengthen those uh, legs or straighten them and bring your heels down. But as I said, not really important here. What we do want to see though, is that the feet are hips dis hip distance apart, sorry, hip distance apart, and that your heels are behind 
your toes so you can't actually see your heels okay so they're not turning in they're not turning out we want a neutral position in the pelvis so staying here a long time can be as i said quite challenging because we're carrying all this weight here in our arms so if you have bent elbows your arms are going to tire quicker and you're want to gonna dive head first towards the mat so really long straight arms tailbone up to the sky knees bent or straight and keep your navel in and then we'll try and focus on the breath which is usually the last thing we're thinking of especially if this is your first downward dog so don't worry about it but if you can breathe evenly in this pose okay so just come down back onto your knees and take a deep breath in you're doing great so a lot of the times what i see common mistakes are that people want to straighten their legs and don't have um, enough shoulder flexibility so two things that happen is that because the legs are straight they have to round in the back and so it looks like this and the other common thing is that people are lifting as i mentioned from the hands Another common thing is that people are looking forward and that they're not pushing their shoulders away from their hands. They're almost in a plank position, shoulders above the wrists, which makes it very hard. Sometimes the stance is too short. So to find a good stance, you can come from your hands and knees, pressing the toes down. Usually pressing from here is a good distance. Another way to find it is from your plank pose and then you just push up and back okay so not too long not too short the other thing if your shoulders are not quite open i suggest that you practice opening the shoulders maybe before in a puppy pose so walking your hands forward just let your chest and forehead sink towards the mat and this will help to open those shoulders so what happens is if you don't have shoulders that are um, very open so you can't go into extension you're kind of here you'll have this shape in your down dog too and it's okay it'll come with time okay so then what happens is you're kind of here instead of here but this is just a limitation that can be worked through increased flexibility so pushing away pushing down external rotation so you have nice space in your neck and finding a long line of energy from the hands up and from the tailbone down to the ankles. Take two more breaths here. Maybe even close the eyes to get a real feel for this pose. And then we'll drop the knees and come back to sit in any comfortable seat. So there you have it. It's not an easy pose, but it's a very common one, which many people think might make it easy, but it isn't. So just be kind with yourself, give, your, give yourself some space, and remember that it's better to try and practice this pose with a good alignment, a good foundation, and come out of it if it's getting too much, especially if the teacher's saying, okay, let's hold it, let's hold it, we'll stay in, in down dog a little more, and you can't take it anymore, just drop your knees, take a breath and come back in when you feel ready. It's better to do it this way. You'll still work your body. Even with bent leg legs, you will be strengthening the whole body. And then that's it. So don't give up, keep going, you've got this, and I'll see you on the mat next time. Oh, also, please don't forget to subscribe if you like this video and want to see more content like this. Drop any questions you have in the comments and I'll catch you next time. Thank you so much, namaste. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did, please hit the like button and also hit the bell button so that you can stay notified of every new video that I release. If you did enjoy the video, I'd love it if you left me a comment telling me which part was your favorite or what you enjoyed or liked. And also please share with your friends and family. They might need this as much as you do. I'll catch you next time. Keep practicing.